exhilarating ceremonies. Be sure to try them all. <laughs> the more you play, the more grace points you collect. Oh, grace points! Yay! Then, trade in your grace points to unlock the holy mysteries. Move forward three pews. You did it. Accessory and get off the couch and into the action. What do you get when you have a gaming publisher that sends $200 checks to video game critics, who makes a fake video game where all you do is pray, and they even advertised it heavily, and when you hire members of a fake church to protest your own game's announcement? What does that get you? Well, one of the most amazing marketing campaigns in the history of the video game industry, and today I'm going to share it with you. Seriously, so much of the stuff they did for this game's advertising is just on another level. It kind of makes me sad that we don't see this anywhere near as much anymore, these sort of creative advertising campaigns. But I think you'll see why they don't do this anymore as we get into it, because they kind of, they probably went a little too far in a couple examples, but trust me, it's pretty entertaining. The game in question is Dante's Inferno, which was the EA spinoff of God of War, basically a Catholic God of War with an EA coat of paint. It's not a great game. It could have really benefited from a sequel, but by God, the advertising and marketing push for this game deserves a round of applause in and of itself. In a lot of ways, it's even better than the game itself. It's so fantastic. So buckle up, we're gonna get into it. So much crazy stuff in this one. Make sure to watch to the end because just when you think it's gotten ridiculous enough, it gets even crazier. But first, a quick thank you to our sponsor. Demo Creator by Wondershare is the new tool that makes it so gamers, educators, and teachers, and amateurs alike can have an easy time while making videos with almost no effort whatsoever while still retaining the utmost quality. Seriously, some of the stuff that you're able to do with these tools is pretty impressive. I mean, I've been working in video for a while and it's crazy to me that you're able to do so much of this stuff so easily now. It's straight up silly. They have this really intuitive editing tool within Demo Creator that makes it extremely easy to put stuff together quickly. So no need to spend tons of money on complex editing suites that take six years to learn how to use in a basic way. This thing is easy to use, intuitive. So if you're looking for a lean, mean editing machine, this thing will get the job done. And there's a free trial for you to check it out to make sure you enjoy it and like it before you put the money up. There's tons of different filters that you can apply very, very quickly just with a drag and drop to see if you like them. And then you can apply different effects or intensities to change it out. It's extremely easy to use. Furthermore, there's a built-in tool for using digital avatars paired off of your webcam. So I just got this little comparison done real quick in the span of just like 15, 30 seconds. And let me uh, get rid of the flip. Boom, there it is. And you can see how it's able to copy my movements exactly. So if you wanna make a video with a digital avatar instead of your face, that's a shot right there, you can do that. It's ridiculously easy. In addition to things like green screen effects without the need for any complicated layering or anything like that that you'll find in some of the bigger softwares out there. And like I said, it's free to try. Check out the links in the description box below. You can put videos together easier than you could possibly imagine. And all of the built-in effects will make your stuff look polished, refined, and like a million bucks. Really, it's extremely easy to use. It's clean, effective. If you're looking to get into making videos, this is a great place to start. Okay, and with that said, let's get into it. So the first thing to understand about this is that Dante's Inferno was scheduled for release in early 2010, which means for the majority of 2009, Electronic Arts, the game's publisher, was actively pushing this game in front of journalists. They knew that they were going head to head against God of War, which at the time, and even still of course, is a huge franchise. So to compete with them, they would have to do a lot to get the attention of gaming journalists. And so they made a very aggressive push. Real quick, just so you know, almost all of the records of this marketing push no longer exist on the internet. For one, because it's like 13 years ago, a lot of the stuff we're going to be looking at is only findable in online backups, like through the Wayback Machine. So this is probably why you haven't heard of a lot of these things, unless you were active in the community back then. But just know there are still traces of this. 
and we're going to look at all of them. The first thing EA did is they mailed $200 checks to various gaming journalists to try and promote the game. And I know this sounds like they were just paying people off, but it actually was a little clever. As described in this article for Plugged In, which apparently was some like Yahoo video game spinoff this website, I don't even know if they still exist, but apparently not because the only way you can find this article is in the Wayback Machine. But even still, the way they described this is they sent $200 checks to gaming critics and journalists. They got the check in the mail and they open it and it, it, it's a real check, actually worth $200, but it's going along with the themes of Dante's Inferno. The note that was in the card said, quote, in Dante's Inferno, greed is a two-headed beast. Hoarding wealth feeds on one beast and squandering it satiates the other. By cashing this check, you succumb to avarice by hoarding filthy lucre, but by not cashing it, you waste it and thereby surrender to prodigality. Pro pro prodigality. Prodigality. Pro prodigality, I think. <laughs> I'm a YouTuber, lay off me. Make your choice and suffer the consequences for your sin, and scoff not, for consequences are imminent. Needless to say, a lot of gaming journalists didn't love this. They thought it was thematically on point, but it was sort of in bad taste. So a lot of these journalists just donated the money to various charities, which I think was a good way of saving it. And a lot of these people donated the money to women's charities because one of the other things that EA did to promote this game had to do with what we uh, would call booth babes. Once again, in the Wayback Machine, we can find this article from July 24th of 2009. And in it, they describe another thing that went on at the Comic Con in San Diego for uh, 2009. Basically, what happened is, quote, in an effort to promote the title at last week's San Diego Comic Con event, EA decided to run a contest asking showgoers to commit acts of lust with any models working at the convention's myriad booths. Yeah, they were then instructed to submit photos via social networking sites like Twitter or Facebook, and the winner would receive, quote, dinner and a sinful night with two hot girls, a limo service, paparazzi, and a chest full of booty. Imagine doing this nowadays. But they did note that five of the runners up would get a copy of the game and a $240 gift card with a bunch of different merchandise as well. Now, naturally, this wasn't everything that it seemed to be. On the website, EA gives themselves an out, noting that, quote, on the official rules page, the judge reserves the right in their sole and absolute discretion to disqualify any submissions that are inappropriate for any reason, including without limitation for depicting or mentioning sex, violence, drugs, alcohol, and or inappropriate language. In other words, don't get crazy. Needless to say, not a lot of people loved this. They thought it was in poor taste. And what you'll notice with a lot of these things we're going to continue talking about is that the overwhelming majority of the advertising campaigns that EA was practicing at this time in their company's history were focused on just outraging people and getting in the headlines. It didn't matter how ridiculous it was, they just wanted to get the article written. And it certainly succeeded because they got lots of articles written, they got some pushback and some hate for it as well, but it worked. But it gets better. My favorite thing that they did was that they created a fake video game to advertise Dante's Inferno called Mass We Pray. It's a fake video game where all you do is pray. Yeah, they have some great taglines like this one. A family shouldn't have to wait until Sunday to worship the Lord. Now you can go to church every day without leaving your home. Participate in more. PrayerWorks Interactive, which is the game studio, is a new game development company founded in Boston in 2007. And of course, the rating is pending. Don't, don't get that mistaken. And the trailer is so fantastic, I'm just gonna let it play. Okay, let's, let's just enjoy this together. It's so amazing, I love it. Okay, watch, watch this. They put this out without announcing it's fake, okay? People thought this was real. Wait until Sunday to worship the Lord. Amen. Now you can go to church every day without leaving your home. Introducing Mass. We okay, play. okay, interesting. Niche product, but sure, sure, interesting. 
the wireless cross controller detects movement in three dimensions. Every twist of the hand and nuance of a blessing is recreated on screen. Every Each nuance of the blessing! 24 unique and exhilarating ceremonies. Be sure to try them all. <laughs> the more you play, the more grace points you collect. Oh, grace points! Yay! Then, trade in your grace points to unlock the holy mysteries. Move forward three pews, Add you did it. Accessory and get off the couch and into the action. <laughs> Can you imagine if this was real? I Instead would buy it. Experience, download the seven sacraments and holy rituals expansion pack. Featuring Ash Wednesday. Wow. Conduct the choir. It's a lot of content. Transubstantiation. Transubstantiation, that's a good one. Holy matrimony. <laughs> holy procession. Genuflecting and many more. <laughs> Bring your family closer to heaven. Mass we pray. Oh! Only it, my prayer works interactive. Coming Easter 2010. It's so great. It's so great. And what's even better is when people would go to the website, masswepray.com, which, by the way, is not a thing anymore. It's very sad. The only way you can find it is in the Wayback Machine. If you go to the website, it'll prompt you to buy it for like $29,000 or something stupid like that. I love wasting money. I'm not going to spend that much on this. If it was like 50 bucks, I'd probably buy the domain and put the website back up, if I'm being honest. But... If you go to the website now, you can see the punchline of this whole advertising campaign, which was that people would go, they'd click pre-order, and it would pop up with this little prompt. It's a little broken because it's it's all archived, but it says, Heretic, may thou burn in the sixth circle. He who betrays the beliefs of the church blackens his soul with the sin of heresy. A mass not celebrated by ordained priest or on consecrated soil is naught but false ritual condemned by clergy. Thou hast befouled thine eyes with the filth of profane works and betrayed all things sacred. For thy punishment thou shalt be damned to burn in flaming tombs and hang from inflamed crosses, and an eternity of infernal hot fire will not cleanse thee Dante's Inferno go to hell 2 9 of 2010 the whole punchline being that holding a mass in your home through a video game is blasphemy and therefore you're damned to the sixth circle of hell again fun and clever nobody gets hurt nobody's too insulted it's funny it's lighthearted. I think this is brilliant and I do wish more companies did this because I would lose my shit every day like I, this is amazing but wait there's more one of the other deadly sins that they wanted to capitalize on for their marketing push was the sin of wrath and so they sent these packages to various gaming journalists and inside these packages would be just a box really unassuming this is uh, a video where one such game journalist is opening the package they received and something really uh, interesting happens when you open it up, which I'll just let happen. Oh, it's a, an interesting box. Seems put together well, packaged well. Okay. Really nice, really nice. Interesting, interesting. Okay, okay. It's got the bat. You open it up, they cut the twine open. Look what happens when they open it up. Okay, what's gonna happen? What's going to happen? <laughs> yep. It Rick rolls you. <laughs> and the thing is, yeah, the fifth circle is close. Uh, so, so once it trips this Rick roll, there's no way to get it to stop. You can cut the wires. You can do everything. It won't matter. The only way you can get it to stop playing is if you smash the box with a hammer that they sent with the package. So you have to destroy it, which is just funny. <laughs> they sent you something you have to break. <laughs> they have multiple layers of wood. <laughs> to keep it. Why is she so scared? She's like, Whacking it from a distance. Get in there! Get in there! 
Like, why is this not a thing? Why don't more publishers do this? This is amazing. Oh, we've really fallen. You know, people have been telling me, they're like, oh, the United States is falling apart. Oh, modern civilization is collapsing. You know what? I'm starting to think they're right. This is what we got 10 years ago. Why don't we do this now? So all of this is relatively lighthearted. I mean, there's a couple that are sort of distasteful. Um, the the one at Comic-Con, which is just straight up like not OK. That should never have happened uh, where you're asking people to go around booths and commit acts of lust. Like who thought that was going to end well? But this next one, I, I just would never have thought anybody would do like any company would consider this to be a valid marketing campaign but maybe i'm naive basically what happened is at e3 a bunch of uh journalists and news publications noticed that there were a lot of protesters out you can see here an article by the los angeles times from back in 2009 on june 3rd pointed out that there were a lot of protesters targeting Dante's Inferno. Really, really interesting. You know, people are not okay with, with a video game about hell. It's just not okay. Well, it turns out the church that these people claim to be members of didn't actually exist. They said that they were from a church in a nearby city and they had come in to protest this video game about hell. Turns out, totally fake. The church doesn't exist. These people, most of them, it seems like don't go to church at all. They were all hired by EA to protest outside of the convention center, pretending to be upset about Dante's Inferno to, I, I, I mean, draw attention to it, I guess is the only way to, uh, to put it, which I mean, it worked. They got an article in the LA times about the protests, you know, they weren't writing articles about how Dante's Inferno looked like an interesting game. They were writing articles about how people were protesting the game, which is in and of itself press. So it worked. They just had to make a fake church and hire a bunch of fake churchgoers to protest their own game. And this is what's just so amazing. Like these creative marketing campaigns, we just don't see it anymore. Part of it is because there's a lot of externalities to these campaigns. There's the initial idea, which might sound fine, and then there's the practical implication of it and all of the other side effects that come along with it. With something like this, like a lot of people felt like this was just in really bad taste. A lot of Christian groups thought that this was just not okay, that they were effectively mocking their beliefs by hiring fake members of that community to protest for some easy clickbait and advertising. In the same vein, people felt like the, the video game about mass um, and, and prayer mocked the concept of prayer and mass. And so people got upset about that. And we can say like, have, have you know, thicker skin, chill out. It's not a big deal. It's all it's fun and games. But then they kind of mixed in some other stuff, which was just not OK, like the the lust thing at Comic-Con, asking to commit acts of lust at booths at the convention center, which I mean, that caused uproar in 2009. Can you imagine that today? I it, like game over, Red Rover. That's it. But the major downside of marketing campaigns like this is that they miss out and often blow past the only thing that really matters for sake of the game being advertised, which is that people lose sight of what's being advertised, the video game. And that seems to have happened with Dante's Inferno. The marketing campaigns were so aggressive, so eccentric and bizarre that those ended up being all anybody was talking about. And when the game launched in February of 2009, the people that tried it felt like it was rushed and unfinished. It's very, very short, only five to seven hours long. And the last like quarter of the game is just basically the same arena, just copy and pasted with different uh, combat challenges. It's really, really lame. And so the game didn't live up to the hype that the marketing put forward. And the game itself was kind of forgotten in all of the marketing itself. You know, it's one thing for like The Last of Us Part Two to get free press because some story plot points leak. It's another thing to have your game caught up in fake scandals that you've created yourself, you know, by hiring your own protesters to make it seem like people are more outraged about it than they actually are. But you know what? Let me know what you think of all of this in the comment section below. Is this marketing campaign interesting? Do you think this is best left in the past? Or do you wish we saw more creative marketing campaigns like this nowadays? Let me know. 
And of course, if you know of any other crazy stories in the gaming industry, leave those in the comment section below. Who knows, they might get their own video. And of course, if you want to see a critique of Dante's Inferno for me to do a big breakdown of it, let me know in the comment section below as well. I've already played it. I have a bunch of notes on it. I just need to know if it's worth making a video on and if you would watch it. So let me know. But with that said, follow all my socials, link tree below, blah, blah, blah. See you over on Twitch in the next video. I love you all. Bye-bye. You know the, the drill.